Hey guys, and welcome back. I'm Simon, bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. With Throne of Eldraine being all the talk in the Vortho community right now, I wanted to dig a little deeper into a character looking to be featured in this set's story, Garrick Wildspeaker. Now, I'm not going to go into his full history. I've already covered that, and not a lot has changed up to this point. So, go ahead and click the banner above or the link in the description below if you want to get caught up on his story so far. Today, though, I want to talk about what makes Garrick such an interesting character in MTG's storyline and answer the question, what happened to Garrick on Eldraine? Oh, and stay tuned for the end of the video where you can win a copy of Garrick Cursed Huntsman by supporting the Aetherhub and joining the Vorthos army. I'm trying to spread these videos out to as many people as possible, so if you could share it on Reddit or social media, that would be insanely appreciated. But either way, learn more on how to win at the end. Now. Back to the lore. When discussing planeswalkers and their themes or developments, certain archetypes jump out at you. Chandra's journey to overcome her impatient, passionate responses, Liliana's triumph over her ill-conceived fate, learning to care for others and thus saving herself, Gideon's selflessness and his own redemption. Those are all development tracks those characters went down, but what theme defined Garrick Wildspeaker? Well, in his history and origins, we're met immediately with the theme of freedom, and that freedom consistently being threatened by others. As a young man, he and his father were hounded by authority figures to be conscripted in some far-flung war. They were simple farmers who loved the land, yet someone else came in to tell them how they should live their lives. This is also where we see the second theme of Garrick's character, Rebellion. Rebellion and freedom have come to define who Garrick is, even into Throne of Eldraine. As Garrick rebels against his native plane's authority, the pressure to take away his freedom, his planeswalker spark eventually ignites, but only after he learned and gained an affinity for nature spells and communion with animals. Beasts in Garrick's development symbolize his ideal, most pristine conditions as a character. Living in the wilds, uncorrupted by the trappings of mankind, free to go, do, hunt, anything he wants at any time. His animal companions are an extension of who he is, or at the very least, who he strides to be. As we build up this character, this massive hunter, this person of nature, someone who respects his prey and goes to great length to honor the wilds, we start to see his first theme, freedom, erode. Garrick's mother was a strong soldier who died in a foreign war, now his father, a humble farmer and skilled naturalist, was too being conscripted into a conflict he had no part in. His family's freedom was taken from them. The idea of freedoms being restricted is echoed again when Garrick fatefully met Liliana Vess and faced off against her chain veil. With that dark magic coursing through his veins, the proud hunter became nothing but a mindless beast. His personal freedom of choosing his game, for example, was forever changed. Even with a hedron jammed under his skin, thanks to the interference by Jace, who just managed to stop Garrick from turning into a full-blown demon, Garrick still isn't free. The curse imposed on him the desire to hunt planeswalkers, and only planeswalkers, out of fear, paranoia, and rage. And that's where we see Garrick enter the scene on Eldraine, a hawking planeswalker hunting madman, lacking any sense of freedom or will. But as Eldraine starts off, his freedoms just erode even further. Garrick travels to Eldraine to hunt Oko, a fey planeswalker that fell on the hunter's path. We don't know why Garrick was after Oko specifically, outside of him just hunting any old planeswalker, but still, Oko had more skill than the average prey and dodged Garrick's killing blow, managing to trap and restrict his movements. In a more physical representation of this whole limiting freedoms theme, this is where we see Garrick at his most vulnerable, but also his most defiant. He struggles, though a huge man like Garrick who can take down the biggest game in the multiverse, he's now rendered frail, hold back by vines. It really speaks to how defeated, for the first time in a long time, Garrick is at this moment. He spits venom at Oko, denying to answer any questions, just hounding over and over how badly he was going to kill Oko. Fearing this planeswalker hunting planeswalkers could in fact track him to other planes, as Garrick had suggested in this scene, Oko did the only thing he could to protect himself, put Garrick under a spell that left him completely under Oko's control. 
you'd think that this mind control would be the ultimate sign of his original theme of lost freedom, right? And that's not wrong. But arguably, being lost under the chain veil's influence was far worse and even more destructive than doing Oko's dirty work. Sure, Oko treated him like a dog and literally called him dog and forced him to obey his commands, but Garrick was free in another sense. He was free from the blood rage of the Vale's magic, and for Garrick, that was enough at the time. It's noted that he seemed almost at peace when he was finally able to let go and give Oko the reins. Garrick under Oko would even do some good things while still technically under the curse of the Chain Veil. When he and Oko ran into the Kenrith twins, Will and Rowan, early on in their adventures, they found the young royals struggling with a group of redcaps, or goblins. Luckily, Oko was merciful enough to sick his dog on the pack, and Garrick just tore into the little buggers, sweeping most away in a single strike of his giant axe and ultimately saving the twins. See, even being a thrall is better than being cursed by the chain veil. As Garrick traveled with the group, Will in particular took an interest in the hawking hunter, trying to understand his subservient behavior to Oko. While Garrick didn't give him much information, Will was astute enough to know that the man struggled internally, that he was in fact suffering. Information he would use later to manipulate Garrick, but we're getting a little ahead of the story. The group seemingly go their separate ways, and while some good things did come from this new master, Oko, well, he isn't a good dude in general, and Garrick was off killing innocent people once again. Oko had Garrick murder two of the High King's men right in the camp they were staying at with the twins, helping him succeed in his ultimate goal of capturing the High King himself. Back to his murdering ways, although we should note that under this powerful command, Oko did instruct Garrick not to harm Will and Rowan Kenrith specifically, so there's that. The rest of the story we don't really hear from Garrick, we assume he's just hanging out with Oko, killing people who get in their way, being the best bodyguard slash assassin on Eldraine. When we do see him again, it's when Will and Rowan make it into the wilds, searching for their father. Oko had laid a trap for the twins, and Garrick was charged with kidnapping a member of their party who had gone astray, named Surriz, their healer essentially. So Garrick appears with a battered and bruised Surriz, like Garrick must have really done a number on her because her legs were broken and so was her shoulder. So Garrick with a mean 1-2 captures Surriz and her unicorn Sophos, which is impressive because that unicorn is a cold-blooded killer. I mean, it killed a troll or a giant or something big, so yeah, it isn't a fairy princess unicorn for sure. So the gang's all trapped in a dome of vines thanks to Oko, and Garrick is put on watch duty. Commanded to, hey, if uh, anyone starts digging or cutting their way out, go ahead and kill them. So he just stands there like a statue on sentry duty. But just being mind controlled doesn't mean he's a zombie. He still has memories, and he remembers Will in particular. Will knows Garrick is hurting and wants the help. Knowing that he can break Oko's compelling spell, they could possibly get free of this trap. He and the rest of the party also notice how all the animals seem to be calmed by this hunter's presence. The unicorn, their horses, even a griffin one of them had been riding, are all gathering close and unafraid of this intimidating man. There's something good in him. Will notices the Hedron, but isn't sure of what it is, and thinks, oh, hey, this glowing black oozing lamp in Garrick's neck? Hey, it looks pretty bad and evil. Let's cut it out. So without understanding what they were messing with, they cut out the Hedron that was actually holding back the Chain Veil's curse. Bad move. Without a Hedron, Garrick goes into a full berserker mode, the Chain Veil just begging to turn him into a demon. He thrashes, boxes people, animals, trees. It's a rage like they've never seen before. Even though the animals respected Garrick, the Griffin goes on the offensive because it's a trained mount of Arden Veil. But Garrick grabs the beast's beak and the corrupting magic of the Chain Veil seeps in. The Griffin is infected with the same curse and freaks out, jumping on the nearest horse and goring it, cutting into its belly and eating its entrails while it's still alive. It's a freaking madhouse! While everyone sort of runs away, I mean, you'd be crazy not to at this point, we get just a small glance at who Garrick was before all of this. Seeing the griffin in pain from this curse and being driven mad, Garrick says some peaceful words and releases the griffin from this state by snapping its neck. 
So yeah, gruesome, and he did do this to the Griffin in the first place, but some part deep inside of Garrick still had a bit of soul left. Some mercy to spare. Now, however, he turned his attention to Oko, a planeswalker, the bane of his current existence. The blood rage consumed him, and he went a hunting for his prey. Garrick left a huge hole through the vine cage, and the twins followed, knowing that Garrick would lead them eventually to Oko, and Oko would lead them to their father. Garrick, in classic monster hunting fashion, fought a river monster while attempting to cross a bridge, and a four tentacled how beast who was attempting to eat Will and Rowan. Although that was probably a secondary concern, as Garrick, by his nature, just likes hunting big old scary monsters. While he defeated these two beasts, Garrick was left weak by the curse and the fight, collapsing over the bridge unconscious into the waters below, where Undyne, or Merfolk, awaited to drag him below as a meal. Luckily, Will rescued the big man, somehow managing to swim up to the surface while dragging a guy double his size. Will must be like Michael Phelps or something. Anyway, Will's about to drown, Garrick is losing blood and also drowning, they're both near death. When suddenly, a cup appears. Yes, a cup. Or cauldron in this case. Yeah, a giant, massive cauldron just appears at the surface, and Will just tosses Garrick inside and catches his breath. Now, Will didn't know this at the time, but he had just randomly stumbled upon the Lost Cauldron of Eternity, the same one that has the power to bring back the dead and absorb evil dark magic. Very convenient. Anyway, the Chain Veil's curse explodes in a fury as the cauldron just num 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 eats all that delicious evil. At the end of it all, the Chain Veil's curse was expended and Garrick had returned to his proud hunter status, finally clear and finally free from all foreign influences for the first time in years. Guys, it's seriously been like 12 years since Garrick wasn't batshit murdering crazy, and we finally now on Eldraine get to see him as the character he was always meant to be. Still murderous, yes, but like in a normal way. Oh yeah, and that magic cup, it also gives life to those it deems worthy, so Garrick, worthy to a cup. And he would prove that worth, pulling Will to safety and reflecting on how the boy showed him mercy and concern when no one else would. With the group finally seen eye to eye, they worked together to pursue and stop Oko's scheme. Oko had basically succeeded though, as the wild elves were about to kill the High King Kenrith. Now these details I'm leaving vague on purpose because I'll cover them in another video. But in terms of Garrick's character, this was the final showdown. Garrick versus Oko, dog versus former master, hunter versus shapeshifter. Oko first tried to escape, taking the form of a raven, and then a massive drake. Oko couldn't slip away from Garrick's hunting prowess, in either form, as he tussled with the massive form that thrashed wildly. Garrick summoned a massive flock of black birds from a nearby forest, and they just swarmed over Oko. It was like a complete Hitchcock film, guys. Just birds pecking and biting all over the drake's body, clawing at Oko with talons and cutting at his eyes. Though as a drake, he did manage to kill and throw off dozens at a time, they just seemed to keep on coming. Garrick also commanded a nearby griffin, not the one he killed, he isn't a necromancer, but the mount of a griffin rider who had joined the fight for the realm. And the furious beast went toe to toe with the drake as well. All of this resulted in Oko collapsing, being dogpiled on by Will, Rowan, Garrick, and a number of realm knights. It was too much for Oko to overcome. With no other escape and his job seemingly done, Oko shimmered and planes walked away, knowing Garrick could follow wherever he went, although it beats being executed right here and now. Will and Rowan looked all over for a bug or a small mouse, anything he could have transformed into, but Garrick seemingly was the only one who knew what had happened, knew that they would no longer find Oko on Eldraine. As the story comes to an end, Garrick makes a pledge to the Kenrith family that, despite wanting badly to find and strangle Oko with his own entrails, that because Will and Rowan showed him kindness and freed him from his various curses, that he owes them all a debt. He would track down these new, young, and inexperienced planeswalkers, ensuring their safety. This was his vow, his new mission. This once Beast Hunter wanted nothing more than to hunt the biggest game in the multiverse, paying respects to the wilds, living free. But as freedom was stolen from him, and as he rebelled against those authoritarian figures, 
Garrick himself was lost. Now free once more, Garrick's character changes from wanting the freedom to do whatever he pleases to take on the responsibility of helping others. He has the freedom to make that choice now, and he's choosing to sacrifice his own wants and desires to help those who helped him. Seeing this, the newest chapter of Garrick Wildspeaker. Well guys, that's been the development of Garrick's character in MTG, from his initial motivations and themes to the events of Eldraine that has seen his latest evolution. Let me know what you guys think about Garrick and his adventures on Eldraine in the comment section below. And with that comment, you'll enter for a chance to win a copy of Garrick Cursed Huntsman. Make sure you leave that comment a like, become a subscriber of course, and hit that notification bell so you're officially entered into this giveaway. The comment challenge will be, let's say, whoever can most badly explain Garrick's overall story in just a few sentences. Whoever does that, I'll pin the winning comment and send you a message when it closes. So make sure you enter as soon as possible for your own chance. And don't forget, Sharing the video is always super appreciated, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, see ya!